Uh, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Uh, and here on a given Friday, this is Think Tech Talks with Benny Ron. Benny Ron is a, um, he's a, I guess, a research person, a research coordinator. Uh, research no, no, supervisor. No, no. Let, let, let me rephrase it. Uh, okay, I'll just say where he is. He's in the department of in, in Sitar, in the Department of Human Nutrition and Food, and um, I get that right. Food and Animal Service. Science. Science, and he's in the animal side of the food and animal science in the Department of Human Nutrition, and yeah, at Sitar. Well, basically, um, I used to be the aquaculture coordinator for the University of Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and last year, I moved to the Department of Human Nutrition, Food, and Animal Sciences, and I'm extension specialist. Okay, which means you get out there. I get out there, and let me explain to you just really short uh, how it works in CITAR. Okay? CITAR, uh, the uh, it, school? Of no, it's a college of tropical egg and human resources. It's called C I. CTAR. C T C T A A R. H A R. Everybody knows this. C T A H R, the College of Tro Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. Uh, and it's up there on that road. What's that road? Well, it's, it's in so many, places. Place. In the, it's it's in many places. Many places. Many places. Many places around um, the Hawaiian Islands. Because yes, we because have extension people all over. They giving services. The thing about Sitar, that uh, uh, Sitar, how do you pronounce Sitar? Sitar, yeah. Sitar, is it's one of the oldest parts of well, basically it was original. It's the original, I would say, University of Hawaii started, or let's say, bloomed out of Sitar. Okay, all right. Because uh, this was the beginning was uh, School of Agriculture. Yes. College of Egg. Yes. And then University of Hawaii established. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, this is really, oh, I see. This is really the foundation. It's a foundation. Yeah. And when did the human resources thing get involved? And well, it's always about human. I mean, you have to remember that uh, the person that I actually mark uh, the main thing or um, put a big stamp on what's happening regarding the development um, and the wonderful way of doing things in agriculture in the United States is no less than President Abraham Lincoln, who started the system of land-grant institutions, if I recall right, is 1865 already. So... This is before he was killed. Of course. Because he was killed in 1865. <laughs> before, obviously. <laughs> and uh, to this day, we continue with this tradition. So um, there is a commitment by the USDA and the land grant institution to take care of the farmer and the community. And therefore you can see in CITAR different departments who are dealing also with the family, also family services. Uh, so it's not only about the farmer, it's about the family and the community. Okay. Um, it's it's really an interesting department. It's it's different than all the other departments in the university. I think. Well, you have to remember the University of Hawaii is unique because there are what we call it grant yeah. institution, yeah. Um, and there are three of them. You have <coughs> land grant, you have sea grant, and you have space grant. And interestingly enough, University of Hawaii has three of those. That's good. Some That's schools great. don't have that. Well, exactly. Yeah. Okay, you, now you were going to tell me exactly when you when you migrated from co uh, aquaculture coordinator uh, to the extension person that you are today, mm. how how that works now. Oh well, it's in, in it, it very it is very similar. I have to remember when I came to the University of Hawaii first. I came from mainly research base because yeah. I was department head for genetics and physiology, and the main role I had was research. Although I was doing extension, I was doing um, education, but it was from my own will and, and agenda, convincing my bosses at the time not to do only research, but go out and bring it forward. Um, and then when the University of Hawaii asked me to join, I looked at the aquaculture coordinator actually as extension, because you don't have a lot of research in that, and you don't, uh, and we have some educational um, you know, uh, portion in it. 
Uh, so it was, in a way, very natural for me to go into sitar. Uh, when sitar, uh, many of the faculty, uh, their uh, goals or what they're supposed to do is divided between um, instruction, um, research, and services, which is extension. extension. So for me, it was quite uh, natural. And when I came <coughs> in, I um, you know, sat with, with the department chair, uh, with um, uh, leadership in CITAR, including with the dean. We have a new dean, relatively. It's, she's not new anymore. It's over a year. Uh, Dr. Maria Gallo, who came from Florida, uh, and now working on uh, strategic planning for CITAR. And um, I got assignment, basically. Assignments include education. And I'm also now indulging with research. So that means you can be extension specialist, but it's OK to do so also really research and then, education. Yeah, well, we, <coughs> you, got, you got education. Does that mean education of students at SITAR, or does it mean education I developed, of the public? I developed a course. Yeah. Um, I mean, the course was there in the catalog, but um, was not taught for a while, yeah. um, and then I've been asked to take and basically um, redo it or build it what again. What course is that? And this is endocrinology of domestic animals, and one of my expertise, among other things, is endocrinology. So it's I, I like really to teach you're, very much. You're a PhD in biochemistry. No, I, my PhD is actually from zoology at the University of Hawaii, um, and. Today you cannot get any more PhD in zoology, but biology because they got um, put together with the biology. Mm. So I'm, I'm an endangered species. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from you, that really means something. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, so let's uh, let's focus on um, what you're doing for aquaculture um, these days, because that's really been your specialty. It is. You've you've actually, to my knowledge, you've built a whole you know, a whole population of people who are living by aquaculture, who swear by it, and who developing it for their own subsistence and sometimes for sale to others. That's quite something. And in the past, what, 10 years or so, maybe less, uh, aquaculture has been popularized to an un, you know, a, a degree that was unimaginable a few years before that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you've been you've been right in the center of that. How, what are you doing in it now, and how is it doing? Well, it's a continuous work. It's not something that you know. Uh, although I switch from uh, one position to another, but I continued with this yeah. effort. Um, you're right that uh, people were not aware on the importance of aquaculture, and we have to educate the people that actually the seafood uh, uh, trade deficit is only second to oil in the United States. We're talking about somewhere around $11 billion a year. So basically, the United States is really good about creating jobs elsewhere. <laughs> and and I, that's uh, we, are, <laughs> we are, uh, so uh, I, I think, and importing so much, we are becoming a major uh, market. Can Everybody wants others. to go sell, yeah. So <laughs> what we, what I'm preaching for all these years, and my friends in CITAR doing uh, same thing, is we need to produce, we, we need to bring, produce a lot of seafood, basically, and find the right ways to do it efficient um, and with a high level of quality and safety so we can compete with the import and make our product uh, unique for the local population. And this is quality is uh, the best way to compete with the uh, markets outside. Well, I remember you, uh, yeah, I, don't have, I can't count the years already, they, they go by so, so fast, you know. Um, but you brought in James Rakosi from the Virgin Correct. Islands, that was quite something. Yep. He's, he's a global uh, authority on aquaponics. Aquaponics, correct. Um, and, you know, aquaponics has really taken hold. There are a lot of families that live by aquaponics, particularly in the neighbor islands, but also here. Um, and, and uh, gee whiz, uh, aquaponics has a real foothold in Hawaii. Um, and I think you've been in the middle of that. So 
<clears throat> Am I right? How is it going? What are you doing in it? What is, what is the extension program doing in it now? Okay, uh, yes, you're right. In 2009, um, just before the Hawaii Aquaculture and Aquaponic Association uh, organized uh, the annual conference, I've been asked to help, and I was able to sponsor and bring Jim Rokosi from the Virgin Islands um, to give six lectures around, including in the Hawaii Aquaculture and Aquaponic Association conference, but also at the University of Hawaii, and I flew with him to Hilo, and he gives lectures over there. And the two main uh, issues that he's talk he talked about were aquaponics, and his experience of about 40 years in this field uh, and he was talking about also bioflock. This is another very interesting subject. <coughs> Bio what? Bioflock. No. It's actually a it's a it's a B I O F L O C, and um, it's uh, basically uh, the bioflock is a, a system by which you sequester the nitrogen that is coming out of the animals in aquaculture. It can be shrimp and it can be fish. Um, that after they eat uh, and they take the protein inside and build the muscles, but about 70% of the nitrogen is actually depleted, going out. Uh, in one of the forms is ammonia. And ammonia can be toxic for the fish or shrimp. Um, and you need bacteria to break it down. At the same time, you don't want this to stay in the water or to be in the effluent and impact the environment. And also this is nitrogen that you try to harness back because that's a lot, I mean, that's the cost of the food is related a lot to the protein part in the food. And that's actually what helps growing those animals. So uh, one of the people who developed it, uh, his name is Professor Yoram uh, Avni Melech from uh, the Technion in Israel, who actually, he started using the term bioflock technology. And the idea is to bring in bacteria and to put in the water something like oats, some sort of, you know, complex carbohydrates, uh, so they can settle on it. And the give them molasses, give them some sugar so they can start growing. And what those bacteria are doing in order to grow they harnessed the nitrogen, which is not available for the shrimp or fish, but it's available for the bacteria. And they grow and grow their colonies on those flocks. They cause sort of flocks with a lot of nitrogen that was harnessed from the water and sequestered back and into those what flocks. You want to and do. then those, you want to do those bacteria eventually colonies die, mm -hmm. but they are big enough as flocks for the shrimp and fish actually to recognize them and be able to chew on them. So this way you actually get the protein back to the animals. Those, this protein that was uh, depleted from the animals yeah. going back Go into the animals. And so you become a more sophisticated farmer. Yeah. You have, the other thing that it's doing, you have many more types of bacteria in the water and this is an advantage. The more types of bacteria you have, and the more types of bacteria you have in the intestine of the animals, and it's This, this is a recent us. development, Biofly? Well, it's something that was developed throughout, I say, the 10, 20 years, but lately it proved itself as a really uh, important, especially when people start looking at the effluents yeah. and try not to sure. have toxic waste. It goes you know, hand like, in like glove with, with aquaponics in general. Yeah. Well, aquaponics also has this um, I would say uh, bacteria, positive relationship with the bacteria where the animals, the fish, uh, they're being fed are, again, you have ammonia leaving the animals um, and going into the water and mainly it's ammonia and the different bacteria taking this ammonia and making it into nitrate, which is also toxic, but then there are bacteria they take it into nitrate, which is the nitrate becomes a mineral that the plants can use, and it's not toxic at all to the animals. So when you do that, and you have plants in your system in the aquaponics, then they filter out, and they uh, have the uptake of that 
uh, nutrients, and by the time the water reaches the fish, uh, the water is clean, and clean from ammonia. Hold a second, we're gonna take a short break. That's Benny Ron from Sitar, the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, and he's in the Department of Human Nutrition, Food and, and Animal food Sciences. And Animal Science, and he's on the animal science of that. Yep. Okay. Uh, but uh, this is Think Tech, Think Tech Talks. Uh, we're calling the show, <clears throat> they're putting tension on it, we're calling it Aquaponics versus Aquaculture. And I'm going to distinguish those two things with Benny here, who knows about both of them in detail. I'll be right back. We want to thank our underwriters, Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric on Maui and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle and Cook Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to the tools and data they need to make better informed property investment decisions. I'm Nicole Horry. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashen. See you next time. We're back, we're live. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech Talks here with Benny Ron of Sitar, the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. Today we're talking about aquaponics or aquaculture. What's the deal? <laughs> well, I, I told you before, there's no either or. He's, he's trying to pull a rug out under my, my title yeah, for the we'll show. Yeah, we'll take the title down. But that, that's okay, <laughs> we play with this some more. <clears throat> so let's, let's talk a little more about aquaponics. Can you distinguish aquaponics for me from aquaculture? I mean, is, is aquaponics part of ag uh, aquaculture? or vice versa, what's the difference? Okay, aquaponics is actually part of aquaculture. Okay. Or you can put it uh, in a different way. In the aquaponics, part of it, or major part of the aquaponics is aquaculture. So it depends how you want to look at it. Um, let's talk about aquaculture for a second. <clears throat> there are different definitions for aquaculture, but in general, is growing, organisms, it can be plants or animals, in water, in it's a culture in defined and controlled conditions. Okay? And this is important to notice that it's an artificial environment, is that fair to say? You can call it artificial, but um, I would call it control. Okay. Um, because artificial might sound not in the right way, because are you going to call all the farming and agriculture artificial? I wouldn't call it like that. Okay. So I don't think, if you want to do justice with aquaculture, I wouldn't put the E in the word artificial. Okay, let's call it controlled. Call it, that, that's farming. And it means it's, it's, it's farming in water. I mean, the water, the water in question could be on the land, it could exactly. be land-based water, if Correct. you will, or it can be in the open ocean. Totally. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Now, they, we have to make a, a distinction here. Because some people call, or some agencies might want to call aquaculture a form of fishery, or form of fishing. Yeah. And I'm absolutely opposed. against, opposed. Okay. Because so, yeah. fisheries, um, and I personally think that uh, fisheries in Hawaii um, is an important sector, and we need to learn to work together and it's, it's something that it's in the tradition. It's something that in the tradition uh, also of the United States need to be, continue to be supported. And, but we have to make the distinction between aquaculture to fisheries. So and to, the main- When you say fisheries, you mean hunting fish. Exactly. Because today, most of the people in the United States, as far as I know, they don't go out and hide bison. They don't hide chicken. 
and so forth. I mean, we had Thanksgiving right what now. What an image that presents, you know. Let's go hunt some chicken. Whoa. Exactly. You know, we have Thanksgiving, let's go hunt some turkeys. When is the last time you know anybody doing it? So, but everybody look at farming as a natural thing. They should look at aquaculture as farming in water. Then it becomes a natural thing. Now, we have to realize that fishing is going out into common water, public water, and taking out organisms, fish, that the fishermen never grew, never took ownership, never managed, and never invested in them. Never did anything for them. He just goes and takes well, them. Well, yeah. Well, you have to differentiate this regular type of fishing that we know from the old Hawaiian tradition when they had the koa, which was a site where a family uh, of fishermen or others knew about that. And they used to come and feed the fish over there and in the ocean, a, a, in, the ocean in a certain spot. Uh, and they used to call it koa. And they, not that. koa, K-O-A. K -O -A. Okay. And they used to um, basically entrain the fish to the point of time they said, okay guys, we need to collect you. And it was like, okay, the fish understand, now they need to be serviced for a human and <laughs> they come out. But, but it's not that you take and you never bring back. So in Hawaiian tradition was, let's give back to the fish. And they used to go and feed them uh, on a regular basis without taking them out. Mm -hmm. So this is an investment and it's a relationship. So it's not, but the okay. regular That's fishing good. that we That's know, to know. Yeah, yeah, but the regular fishing uh, that we know about is that we call it sometimes um, the tragedy of the commons. It's like people go into public area and take whatever they want and then it becomes theirs and then they make the profit. It's like hunting. Now, aquaculture, big difference from fishing because aquaculture you have two main things that fishing don't have. Is you have management, you have to manage the environment, you have to control the environment, you have to prepare everything for your fish and you have ownership from day one on the seeds and whatever comes after that. So this is a big difference because you have a lot of input into your system. So by the time you harvest, it's like farmers who grow corn or grow papaya or grow anything else. They invest in the land, they fertilize, they put the seeds or the plants, and then they wait to harvest it. That's a big difference. So you could say it's fish farming. Well. In a way, yeah, fish farming or any kind of other organism, it can be you know, shrimp, it can be anything else. Now, aquaponics can be a sector within aquaculture where the base of the aqua, aquaponics is aquaculture. So anyone who wants to go into aquaponics have to understand they have to learn about aquaculture because there's a very important base of aquaculture within the aquaponics. Uh, this is one issue that many people who look at aquaponics said, oh, it's a piece of cake, I can do it, or it sounds really interesting, and I'll start dwelling with it, doing these things. But my warning is, be sure to learn the aquaculture part very well, because you deal with animals, and you deal with their environment, and you deal with the old whatever comes with, with the feed, and so forth, feed, diseases, safety, etc. It's a lot to know. A lot to know. And then once you understand that portion, you have to start learning about plants. And plants, horticulture, it's a subject by its own. It's very diverse, depending on what kind of plants you want to grow. Uh, we're talking about different systems of aquaponics, depending on the root system. Because in some system, you use, for example, gravel in order, or cinder in order to grow, let's say, sweet potatoes something that you can put in and know that it will get oxygen because it's going to go up and down the water. It's not going to be soaking in the water all the time. On the other hand, you, have, you can have flow beds for uh, cucumbers or tomatoes and so forth or, or lettuce where you have the roots in the water and it can be all the time in the water, only the roots, and they're not going to go bad. So you have to learn the different systems. And this is without talking about marketing. Yeah, no, but just, just in creating a product, um, you, you have to you have to know a lot of things. You have to know, and you have to do them well. Of course, you have to know and do agriculture pretty well to make it to make it bloom. And then you have to know about uh, aquaculture with the fish. You have to know that well to make them live. And if you mess up on one side, you're going to mess up on both sides. Correct. So it's this very delicate balance. 
True. Um, and you know, I mean, it strikes me that you have to you have to be very smart or very well trained or both in order to manage even a small ecosystem uh, with aquaponics because it's it really and <clears throat> you know it hasn't it hasn't been in existence that long, has it? Well, actually, it was. It was for many years. I would say decades. It, it, people know about that. Dec like, decades, but at but, least but like not, forty not years or more. Centuries. Well, we went no, back no, no, to the no, 18th no, century. No, they didn't no, know how no, to do no, this. No, no. Well, you have to realize that aquaculture itself is relatively new. Yeah. Although you can find in the literature that China did it so many thousands of years, or Egypt, yeah. and and we know in in Italy they used to do well. At least, you know. Um, um, took some areas and closures and play with the tide. Hawaiian did it over the a thousand years. Yeah. yeah, Hawaiian, uh, I would call it science. It was m more, I would say, um, empirical science, but eventually, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say definitely the Hawaiian uh, fish pond is science by itself. Yeah. But again, uh, if you compare it to the agriculture that farming on the land that started developing about 10,000 years ago at the Fertile Crescent, then the, we have a lot of experience from that, and we have, so that means that aquaculture is a baby in diapers. Yes, that's that's so what we I was to, getting we at. We need to get it. We need to we look at it. We know a lot about way. agriculture, but Correct. we don't know nearly so much about aquaculture or certainly aquaculture. But the learning curve is really, really steep. Why and is good why is because, uh, well, we, we already have a lot of experience from farming, ten thousand years, and you can extrapolate and you can take techniques. Uh, and you can learn from that. And today, with all the means that we have, with all the sophisticated technology and science, with the sophisticated technology of communication, that people can just transfer things right into my phone, uh, I can watch movies, I can get all the in and out uh, right away. We have to, I would like to just mention one more component that is really important into the aquaponics that we didn't mention in this conversation, is the engineering. Because we're talking a lot about plumbing, we're talking about pumps, we're talking about moving water, because the whole thing is the base for everything, and the engine of everything in the aquaponics is the bacteria, is the heart of all the aquaponics, because if we wouldn't have the bacteria that will take the ammonia and transfer it to uh, nitrate, minerals that the plants can uptake, and something that the fish will not be uh, becoming, uh, you know, toxified from this yeah. uh, uh, component. As, as you mentioned before. Then this is important. But how you move everything around, you need to have the technology, which is the engineering part. And by the way, aquaculture engineering is a big subject by itself yeah. because it has to do with a lot of plumbing, with moving water, yeah. moving air, yeah. uh, moving animals. Yeah. And so a person who goes into it. They have to consider the fish or other organism like shrimp, understanding them. They have to uh, consider the plants. They have to consider the bacteria, and they have to consider the engineering of all it's, these. It's systems. like a whole world of science. Definitely. Well, on that note, we're going to take another short break. Okay. Uh, then we we'll come back and talk about some of the recent conferences uh, and the conferences that you're planning in this area, and then we we'll talk about how it how it's affecting. Hawaii as a society. This is really important. Okay, this is Think Tech Talks. I'm Jay Fidel. That's Benny Ron. He's with SITAR, the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. Uh, the let me get this right. The Department of Human Nutrition and Food, Food and Animal Service. Science. Science. That's my handwriting. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Aloha. I'm Nicole Hori for Think Tech. For nearly half a century. The Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone No. 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Hori. Mahalo. We're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. Here we are on Think Tech Talks on a given Friday with Benny Ron, uh, who is with SITAR, the College of Tropical Engineering and Tropical, <laughs> <excuse> me, <laughs> Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources at UH Manoa. 
and uh, he's, uh, let's see, I get this right now, he's in the Department of Human uh, Nutrition, uh, Food, and Animal Science. Right. Okay, all right. You did it right. Yeah. <laughs> I have his card. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you know, one of the things you do is you set up these, uh, you go extension, you go all around the state and you show people and you see what they're doing and all that and try to proliferate the knowledge, but you also do events uh, and conferences. What have you been doing lately? Well, let, let, let's just look at the whole scope, Yeah. okay? Um, we use every means that we can. Including a terrific website. Uh, exactly. We have the aquaculturehub.org. Mm -hmm. And we have thousands of members that come. And the nice thing about it, not only that they use it as a clearinghouse uh, for getting information, they contribute. So everybody contribute to it. Uh, we even run classes on the website. So we share a lot of the stuff. You can find yourself over there also with your talks. Um, and this is important because it brings the attention of a lot of people in the state, in the Pacific, in the United States, and outside around the world to know what we do at CTAR, what we do in our department, uh, what we do nationwide. There are numerous people in CTAR that are working hard on the research part and working hard on the education and working hard on the extension. So it's a teamwork uh, by which a lot of people contribute now, <clears throat> on top of the Aquaculture Hub, we have the Aquaculture Training Online Learning Program, ATOL in short, where we actually teach and people can get onto it via Outreach College it's at like the University a classroom. of Hawaii. It's, okay. an, it's an, on the internet. Yeah. What we did in the last year, which was remarkable to us because we were looking for models to see how we do it the best way how we transfer the information, because for us it's important not just to throw it out there. And that's what happened with a lot of websites or with a lot of sure. videos, but what's going on after that? Right. And this is the important point, because the retention is actually always important. We want to follow up on that. So we develop several models with the help of people from around the Pacific, because on the vision of CITAR, on the vision of human nutrition, food, and animal sciences, we call it in short, HANFES, uh, is to help not only people in Hawaii, but in Asia Pacific region. Okay, so the Pacific, they are my, our brothers, scattered all around the biggest do continent we, called the Blue Hawaii. Continent. The what continent? The Blue, Blue Continent, which is the, the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. So what we start doing last year, I went all around the Pacific Islands, I showed them the ATO, I showed them the Aquaculture Hub, I gave workshops, and I said, look, I built a flimsy canoe called the ATO. Now, I need paddlers. Now, if you jump into the canoe and you start paddling, you can decide what the direction we are moving, and I will let you do that. So actually, we start doing it. It was amazing. We, I, I went to American Samoa, I went to Palau, I went to the Federal State of Micronesia, Guam. The ones I really picked it up and did an amazing job. The best paddler I got so far were the people from the Northern Mariana Islands um, and the extension people they're, over they're there. doing it. What they did, they did two things. One model that was successful is that they took the classes, and we're talking about 17 and then 27 students. During the summer, the extension person, Mike Ogle, was putting the computers in his office. The students come in, they do the videos that we produce, they watch them, they learn from them, they answer the quizzes, and then they go out and they work hands-on in the college and with the various farmers. And this was funded by the local Tilapia Association in Saipan, then it was a very successful model. The second model was um, the mayor of Rota. It's a little island in the Northern Mariana Islands. Um, the mayor of Rota and um, his people, and especially the treasurer over there, Frank, what they did, they came to me and said, we want to write a proposal and give it to the Department of Interior. And what we want to do is to send you to Hawaii 
two seat are in Olomana Garden to send five representative farmers that can learn hands on. So we help them with the proposal. We gave them letter of um, you know um, support. They were able to get the money, and they sent us in January of this year five people that were selected among others, and they were farmers. There was one a person, very young one, that they, was... They can learn to take it back. Right, exactly. And there was a person that was a farm worker, and there was one person from the mayor's office. Okay, so they came in, and what we gave, we gave them, they gave, we gave them tablets, and where they can do the aqua, the atoll program, and on the aquaculture hub, they had to ro write a, a journal. And, and the faculty of, of Hanfes and Sitar were very supportive and allowed them to come to their classes to sit in classes at UH. At the same time, they lived in Olomana Garden in Waibanalo with Glenn Martinez and Natalie Kesh. And who do uh, who, and, and they were the teachers yeah. on the ground. And okay. they had to build system. So they had to, morning, you, you do the tablets, you learn, then you Absolutely. go out and you do that work. That really brings it alive, doesn't in, it? They, in, in April, they went back. In, in end of March, we did a ceremony. We gave them certificates. Uh, Dean Gallo, and, and uh, the chairman, uh, Vincent, gave them certificates. April, they went back. They sent me in October pictures of the center, Rota Center for uh, Aquaponics Training and Education, and several systems already there. And they start teaching the schools, the farmers, the plants are growing, the fish are growing. It's I mean, it's so amazing. successful. It is. So this is a model which I'm learning from them sure. how to go about. Yes, and I'm preaching to others, guys, learn from them. This is exactly the peddlers I was looking for to give me a direction. Yeah, that's great. And uh, so that's... based on that, we now give talks about it and we try to have other islands in the Pacific, and it can be even in Hawaii, to join and continue this uh, type of work. Uh, that's Benny Ron. Um, he's with SITAR, the College of um, Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources um, in the Department of Human Nutrition, Food, and Animal Science. Got that? And we're, we're Think Tech Talks. We're talking about aquaponics or aquaculture, trying to sort out all these terms, figure out what it is, where it is, how we can do it, and who's doing it. We'll be right back after this break. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii, broadcasting live from the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. We raise public awareness about tech, energy, and globalism in Hawaii. Technology is critical to our state. A vibrant tech sector will give us new prospects in the global marketplace and will offer great careers and make our economy more resilient. Streaming live on Ustream and Spreaker, ThinkTech allows its hosts and guests invaluable opportunities to report important events and discuss important questions, and to be heard here in Hawaii and around the world. You can find links to our live streams on thinktechhawaii.com or on our mobile website, m.thinktechhawaii.com. And you can see our archive on YouTube. It's all just a click away. We want to do whatever we can to keep Hawaii relevant, connected, and thriving in the complexity of the 21st century. We hope you will help us in those efforts. Tune in today. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Mahalo. We're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel here on Think Tech Talks on a Friday with Benny Ron, my old friend Benny Ron, uh, a doctor of a doctor in zoology who has migrated to aquaculture. Now he's an expert in aquaculture of all kinds. Um, and he's with uh, the uh, College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, the Department of Human Nutrition uh, in Food and Animal Science. Wow. And he's everywhere, doing it everywhere. So uh, you were talking about, you know, the whole experience um, in, in the Call it the what the Federated States of Micronesia no, project. It's in the, in the Northern Mariana no, Islands. I'm sorry, Nor Northern Mariana Islands. Uh, but you had other lots of other events and uh, similar yep. projects this year. We need to identify them quickly. Yep. So um, this year we had several events because what we need to do is to educate the people. We need to educate the people, and mainly the end customer mainly is the farmer, of course the community. But we need producers. 
And as I said in the beginning, the market is there. Hawaii bring, brings in over 90% of what we eat. Yeah. It's amazing the amount they're coming in. And again, we, we produce jobs everywhere in the world, but not, not here. enough here. Yeah. Uh, Hawaii used to be a big exporter in agriculture, but yeah. not anymore. So we need to change this paradigm. Uh, so one of the things that we do in CITAR is we produce workshops. We teach people how to actually do agriculture. So go to every corner of the state. How show to do? Show we, we, how well, sometimes we go, many times we ask ah, people to come over sure, sure. to certain sites, yeah. and it could be any of the University of Hawaii campuses. And that's valuable because you can actually show them an operating site. Def definitely. There's a value. Definitely. Um, I, I give you an example. We had <clears throat> um, um, a big event on uh, in Greenwood Community College with CITAR extension uh, specialists teaching uh, or bringing in people to talk about aquaponics. And, and it, it uh, went through uh, a whole different sectors we're talking there, either a commercial, co the commercial ones, the big ones are about three farms. Uh, we need more of these. Uh, that's, that's not enough if you want to, <clears throat> you know, cover all the produce that we need. But you heard also from uh, backyards aquaponics or people who use it for education because you can take aquaponics and teach STEM, you know, you know. Sure, uh, because the science thing. Because this, exactly, the science so and the engineering. This is a great engineering. way for anybody, including kids, right? Exactly. To learn science. Exactly. You science, do it without technology, science. Uh, engineering and math. And I would add to it, instead of calling it STEM, we should call it STEAM and add the A for agriculture. <laughs> Or aquaponics, <laughs> so we need to teach them steam. So all these, you know, you heard it here on Think Tech. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new, okay. a new term like now, it. steam. <laughs> um, and then uh, what happened is a lot of schools, the teacher, the math teacher, the science teacher, sometimes you know they hit the wall with the kids. It's like go explain to them some abstractive. Why do I have to learn algebra or trigonometry or ge geometry and whatever? And the teacher, all they need to do is like, okay, let's step out. Let's look right, at the aquaponic system. Interface with nature. Let tell me how we can move the water up here and let them go out, down in there. And, that's really good. And then come back to the class and that's let's really, tackle that's it. That's really good. And and work the tools. And so, oh, how yeah. come you're not doing that in every school classroom in the state? Well, we, we, that's one of the things we're pushing for. And you you find that in some places like charter schools and all that, it's, it's coming about. We need to have it as educational, as system-wide, but for that, the Department of Education has to agree to that. And you know, you have national, um, what do you call it, um, markers and standards, and everybody have to line up, you know, and everybody yeah. have to be square, exactly like that. No, we need to make it round. We need to do it different. <laughs> and, so you um, have a big project coming up now. Well, one of the things that, that we, we would like to do, among other things, in order to build more workforce for Hawaii, uh, you know, Department of Ag is a big supporter uh, of workforce, especially, you know, there's uh, aquaculture and uh, livestock uh, support services with uh, Todd Lowe is the head of that. Uh, he, he's unit. the uh, aquaculture guy at, at uh, well, Department that's, of Agriculture. Right, so, so he is a big supporter of that and he gets the funding to start building the workforce uh, for aquaculture. And so one of the things is to add more movies in different sectors of agriculture, other animals, not only aquaculture, mm -hmm. into our existing ATO program. The other thing that is coming up is, this is uh, something that uh, Dean Gallo is actually, you know, uh, asked me to, uh, to lead on that, is to build a new certificate of aquaculture, we can call it COA in short, um, to do it, in, and also I noticed that the Board of Region interested in more certificate. You can find it in the Kaleo, uh, an article about that. So it means we need to not only get masters, uh, I mean, PhDs and so forth. We need to allow students to come in and within two years to give them a certificate of aquaculture. But it will be such that they could go right into the farms and start working. And we have already good experience because in our department in Hefes, we have really pretty good aquaculture component. We have about seven different courses that covering aquaculture in all different ways with uh, Professor Spencer Maleka 
uh, that is doing it. And if you look at the students that came out of this program, you find them in really great places in aquaculture. Uh, for example, uh, one of them is um, now the manager of the hatchery, of the shrimp hatchery in Oceanic Institute. That's an example, a student that coming from Hanfes, from CITAR, and eventually run that program. And we have many more. We start tracing lately where are they coming from. And we, lately what we start doing is asking them for input what sort of skills a graduate of the COA program, the certificate program, will need in order to fit well into the aquaculture industry. Because, you know, as you know, in a farm, what is the first rule when you come into a farm as a new worker? It's like, in any farm, it's like, do no harm. Don't touch if you don't know. Because you might, you know, switch the wrong switch up or down, and you might have it there. So you, you have to learn also the etiquette, how to do things, when to do things. So n not to talk about the basic stuff, understanding the engineering, the business, the marketing. So we push on that. Also what we did, we brought people we, with the help of the Department of Egg here, and with the help of the National Aquaculture Association, we were able to bring workshops onto our state and to the university, and they gave business uh, talks and business and marketing workshops for the farmers well, here. I, I think you're, you know, you're as you always have from the day I met you. You work, you work your bones off to, um, you know, bring this knowledge to everyone you can, you know, to every corner of the state. Um, and you do whatever any human being could possibly ever do to do that, Benny. And but I enjoy it. It's okay. You get medals for that. <laughs> no, I don't need medals. But, but I enjoy here we doing are, and we're going into 2014. <laughs> right. Um, we we may have subsistence uh, uh, aquaponics going on out there. We don't have a lot of commercial aquaponics. Right. People we need the commercial. Selling yeah. it, you know, like right. Mari's Garden out right. there in Midley Long. Yeah, yeah. So and Cunea Farm. Cunea Farm. Farm. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. just looked at it on Saturday. Yeah. But, but there's, you know, and they actually sell to the, you know, the department, I mean, the, the food stores, and it's quite something. Yeah. Um, but, but they're the minority, and they're not all that, you know, big. And, um, and I don't know if they're selling outside the state. Uh, like, you know, you're talking about export. You know, I think export is hard. Um, but, but we're not doing that much. We're not doing any significant ocean aquaculture, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Hawaii Oceanic uh, Technology, you know, the one off Kona with Bill Spencer. Um, we're, not, we're not doing, um, you know, big production so as to export. We're still importing a huge amount of food mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and fish and meat. Uh, That's true. And so, well, you know, we should be we should be self reliant, and we're not. And, and the, there's not. I mean, tell me, I should be hopeful, but tell me what stands in the way. I'll tell you exactly. Uh, right now, we will, it's perfect to your question because right now, uh, NOAA coordinator uh, for aquaculture in the Pacific, uh, Alan Iverson, uh, and myself, um, with some help from uh, Department of Ag too are working on a special project, and we do it for over a year already, where we accumulating knowledge, we organize meetings, we meet with whomever willing to work with us. What stands in the way? I, I'm explaining. And it's all about the ocean monitoring for offshore aquaculture. Why we are concentrating now on the ocean monitoring. Because this is what stays in the way. When you have the different agencies, and we talk about, you know, <clears throat> DLNR, or, or Army Corps of Engineer, uh, or NOAA, or others, what, what stands in the way is the permitting issue. What we would like to see is a one-stop shop. So people like Bill Spencer and others, or, you know, um, um, Neil Sims, uh, Todd Madsen, who actually you know bought the farm from Nielsen, and he has the Campachi, and it's it's quite it's quite successful over there right now, and he wants to add more cages. You know, get stuck on that point. So what we start doing is accumulating knowledge, meeting with people. We're actually going to have the meeting on Monday again, uh, and in the meeting going to be uh, uh, Michael Rubinov, you know, the guy in charge of aquaculture from NOAA, who is, uh, and Mike Crust was in charge of the of the. Uh, you know, the Mary culture part. And these people are really interested 
to see what's happening and how to develop it, but to develop it carefully and in the right way in order to give a chance for farmers to come to one stop shop and do it right and get a okay, permit. Is that the that. problem? It's just the one it's, stop it's, shop it's a, Look, we're talking about um, permitting, we're talking about uh, litigation, and we talk about legislation. So you have to take all these things together and you have to deal with it. So this is not something manini. This is a big thing, but you need to learn to work with a lot of people and create, you know, partnership, create collaborative work and eventually balance and bring everybody to the table to agree that yes, we want to have that. Let's do it in the best, what we call it best practice management to make sure you have safe environment, you don't disturb the environment too much. You have the best fish. The fish are healthy. The customer happy. The the big markets are happy. You know, it strikes me that the government should have best practices too. Uh, the best practices of not making it impossible for entrepreneurs, of not blowing them out of their financing, of not making them close down because they can't cope with all the rules and regulations. Right now, we have a handful, and that's really a luxurious way to put it, we have less than a handful of people involved in open ocean aquaculture. We should have hundreds. Well, that's why we should. We should the whole ocean well, should be. Correct. So we should all live so long. Uh, we got to go now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Benny. That's <laughs> Benny Ron, the College of Ac uh, Tropical Agriculture, Human Resources, the Department of uh, Human Nutrition and Food and Animal Science, and we we have to check in with him every now, now and then for sure. And we'll do this Thank again. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Benny. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> the whole thing.